Hey everybody, this is Brian here. We're going to be talking about epilepsy today and health in general. So let's get straight to it. Today's video is going to be feeling about feeling like yourself on a trip out. You know, if you're if you've been in your house or you've been bedridden or in a hospital or something like that and you're going out into the world for, you know, the first time in a while for, you know, like a trip out uh, when you've been kind of secluded or something like that. You know, most of the time when I go out, I feel like I have to focus on my illness of having epilepsy because of safety concerns or medical concerns, you know, things such as I always have to remember to remember my hat and my watch and my my phone and there's just like a big checklist, you know. But today was the first time I felt that I was me, you know, that I was Brian and not just a guy with epilepsy in a long time. And so I wanted today's video to be on self-image. You know, ask yourself, how do you look at yourself when you look in the mirror, you know? I think self-image and illness are often unfortunately intertwined because people have to face so many challenges daily depending on what their illness is. And regardless of what your illness is, you guys are all brave and you guys are all warriors and everything. But I wanted to make a video about feeling like you and, and not just feeling like a sick person when you go out into the world, you know? Um, so... <clears throat> nevertheless this isn't where i feel we should be as a community you know i think that you know this shouldn't be where we start in self-esteem and an image those aren't the things those aren't the primary things that define you as a person think of your what your key mannerisms are what are your idiosyncrasies as a person the, th the little quirks that make you 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 know what do you believe morally also? And what do you find morally repugnant? You know, these are the things that establish your persona and build gradually the monument that is you as a human being that's worthy of respect and love. Think of the people that are close to you, the people that you love and respect. And are, why do they respect you? You know, think it's not your illness that causes whether they they like you or want nothing to do with you or they love you remember that you know if you ever feel like i did like a patient remember that you know if, if you ever feel like a patient on the outside of the normal society remember that it's not your illness that defines you anyways self-worth is born of the internal and the inherently unique things that define you as an equal and special person remember who that identity belongs to the one that goes along with the name and the face it's you it's you you know it's that person they're no stranger let them out let them out to dance on the floor of life with everybody else don't don't keep yourself in there trapped you know so today i really wanted to talk about self-image as a sick person who goes out into the community more than i used to and i, I wanted to ask what's it like for you you know are people judgmental towards you do they walk by you? Do they ignore you? Sometimes these are the experiences I've had, especially at medical establishments. Uh, people are mostly rude or self-absorbed towards anybody different, and that goes for illness or gender or race, you know, uh, sexuality. Um, but the narcissism of some cashier at the grocery store or some random guy at the bank, it shouldn't brand you even though it, it often might. It, it's been that way for me in the, pa in the past where I've internalized those pains when I really, I really shouldn't have, you know? So here are several tips. Uh, this video is also going to double as a top 10. Uh, several tips to help feel like you as a person instead of, uh, of one dealing with a chronic illness when you're going out, especially for the first time in a while, you know? So number one on this list, let me check the time on here. Uh, okay, we're doing pretty good. Number one on this list is to look at who you associate with, especially at your vulnerable points. Don't surround yourself with judgmental types that are hard on you and, and are overcritical just because you're seeking their approval, you know. It's important not to look down on ourselves for being sick. Don't take fault for something you wouldn't pin on a loved one if it happened to them. You wouldn't blame cancer or, or lupus on somebody you wouldn't say a person should have you know done a better job in life you you wouldn't think that way so why uh, why pin that on yourself why be hard on yourself for being sick you know and thinking towards the past and you know wanting things to be like they used to it's really easy to get trapped in that kind of backwards thought um so by the same token 
Why, why let others treat you as a lesser by talking down to you, walking away and giving you weird looks? Surround yourself with the type of people that reinforce your success and don't make excuses for the other type of toxic people that bring you down with things such as condescending behavior, maybe by a doctor um, or, or verbal mistreatment, you know, maybe by a, a, a person who's your partner currently, but you want to be out of that relationship. Remember, desert, you deserve support, you know. So don't surround yourself with the type of people who aren't providing it. Number two is going to be don't overdo it and know what your limits are. You know, don't be afraid to ask for help out of ego. You know, if you overwhelm yourself by biting off more than you can chew, then it'll be too much in the end at some point. Make realistic or sorry, take on realistic pieces of things and divided like fractions, you know, break it up so it's less overwhelming. Why do you want to feel like a worn out plastic bag blowing in the wind by the end of the day? You you know that if you overwork yourself, eventually it's not going to be free of consequence. So so take it easy a little bit, you know, when you're sick, uh, you know, give yourself a little bit of a break because you need it, you know, let yourself heal. Aside from avoiding judgmental people, you know, which was number one, and from overworking yourself at number two, you should also remember yourself as an equal emotionally. The medical system at times treats us as if physical disabilities are cognitive. So sometimes you have to remember that you're a normal person that is still there, even if your body doesn't quite work as well as it used to. If you're in a wheelchair, I think Stephen Hawking was in a wheelchair, but he was still one of the most brilliant people of all time. Um, this is especially important because people in society are going to treat us as, as children if we project a broke or meek image, you know, broken or meek image, you know. People will receive that image and respond to that instead of to you as a person. They'll respond to that image. So one way to be treated as you is to act as such and to be yourself unapologetically. Leave no room in the goalposts for dog bags and rotten eggs from the judgmental, you know. Don't let people, you know, leave toilet paper all over your scene. Um, <clears throat> number four on here is to think of what you are that day. What you can handle physically and emotionally. If you want opportunity. If you want the opportunity to express yourself and to be the real you, then set yourself up to succeed by not overwhelming yourself with more stress than you can medically handle uh, or an amount of commotion such as uh, large amounts of noise. And, you know, things like that amount of stress can cause a medical event that might land you in the hospital, you know, whether it's an anxiety attack or whether you have some sort of hypersensitivity or heart problems. Obviously, this can vary tremendously depending on the illness that you battle. But you guys are brave, like I said, either way, whether you deal with emotional issues or with a physical impairment. Um, anyways, moving on to a different topic at number five. Let's check the camera. Okay, good. The next tip combines the ideas of music and, like I said before, being yourself unapologetically. Uh, and this is to play your favorite music in the car, on the radio station, or on a CD, without apprehension or self-consciousness. Music is an important chunk of who we are as people, regardless of who you are, where you're from, you know? So letting that out is going to be a big part of being yourself. So when leaving home, put on what you like, you know, regardless of who else is in the car, you know? If, especially if you're shy or if you're physically disabled or bedridden, you know, it, it's important when getting out to be yourself and, and to let the world see that, you know. Some people dislike rap or country, but some like one and hate the other. So it's all personal, you know. In the end, I, I recommend what singer Graham Nash sang, which is Be Yourself, um, which is one of the most beautiful songs ever. Anyways, number six on here. Is if you are nervous or have anxiety over a trip out, since it may be your first one in a while, don't inflate it to more than it really is. Uh, it's going to be harder to be yourself if you make the environment so unforgiving and stressful. It'll be much easier to socialize naturally without a plastic smile and bad jokes if you don't make others out to be better than you for no good reason at all. Remember, like I said, not to look down on yourself for a sickness. 
In the course of being yourself, there are obviously going to be some rocks in the road. I want you to think of each one as a stepping stone of sorts. Think of the ignorance that births that type of mistreatment and that type of immature behavior. Think of the type of person that you are for simply not acting that way towards others who are sick or down on their luck. Then, when, you view, when your view of yourself has a positive infusion, a breath of fresh air, use that as a fuel to behave as yourself as much as possible to boost your confidence. Some of us are a little out there under it all. Remember, it's okay you aren't alone. Why hesitate to be you if there are probably a billion other people that feel the same way? They're just scattered around out there. Remember, you guys aren't weird even if you have weird like habits or something. It's just that you're scattered around from similar folks. Um, you know, there's probably some guy in Beijing who feels exactly the same way you do about something odd that you thought you were like, you know, completely unique or whatever. Number eight <clears throat> is going to be probably a little bit more of a difficult one. Um, let's check my camera. Um, which is to try to act confidently when you guys go out into the world, even if it's a little bit hard. Speak in a louder voice so you don't communicate weakly and get talked over by type A, boisterous, more uh, assertive people. Introduce yourself and extend a hand. Try extending a hand, you know. Uh, shake, shake people's hand when you first meet them. I know some of us have social difficulties. You know, I, I had very few friends for the first couple years of school and I, I didn't really make a friend till like high school anyways uh I, I understand how you feel is my point nevertheless it's hard to eschew from it all forever and it's best to not feel small or dominated in conversation you know what i mean number nine on here is that i also wanted to recommend that you remember what obstacles societal stigmas attitudes and and particular people acted as your roadblocks in the first place where would you be if if you could just be yourself uninhibited by other people's and considerations and societies and considerations what lies underneath uh, you know what's the true you therefore the question really is what do you want to be once you realize how you were held back in the first place it's a lot easier to untie something once you've seen the knot and you can be yourself with less obstacles when you realize all the ways that society was repressing you in the first place. Um, you know, finally, I just want to say to remember that you're never unloved, regardless of circumstance. You know, even if you're a shy or reclusive person, even if you're lonely and don't go out too often, I want you to know that you're never in love because I love all of you guys for who you are as people and nothing will ever change that no matter what. If it, 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 what am I trying to say? It's the heart and the character inside of you that makes me appreciate what really matters about you guys. And you guys are the best. So take that out with you as you venture into the world. Don't hide away the gift that is the real you underneath the plastic standards that were crafted by our plasticine society. Uh, it, nothing means as much as the real person that is you. So thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. And I'm out now. Peace out.